I would not put any stock into what any Fed chairman says, because you always have to remember that these guys are there to tell a story and they always want to put a positive spin on everything. And even if they're concerned about something, they'll never admit it. Like when Ben Bernanke was at the Fed telling everybody not to worry about the mortgage market, subprime was contained. He later admitted in an interview after he was no longer Fed chair that he didn't really believe that. He was just simply trying to advance the administration's uh, you know, view that everything was great. And so he couldn't really speak his mind he kind of had to act as if he was part of the Bush administration. But I think Janet Yellen, uh, or now Jerome Powell rather at Fed, Yellen's at Treasury, but I think Powell also fancies himself part of that uh, Biden administration. And so he wants to say positive things. He can't say, oh, I think we're gonna have really high inflation uh, because then, I mean, what is the Fed gonna do about it? Well, you better raise interest rates. You better shrink your money supply. You better stop financing all these stimulus bills. So in order to validate their easy money policy, uh, Powell basically has to say that any increases that we experience in consumer prices are just a temporary aberration. It's transitory and don't worry about it. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think that what we're seeing now is the beginning of a very, very big acceleration in U.S. Uh, consumer prices. So America was able to run these huge trade deficits. We were able to export our dollars to countries like China, and China would warehouse the dollars, recycle them into U.S. treasuries, and then replace them with consumer goods. The Chinese were producing all these low-cost consumer goods for Americans to buy, and the rest of the world was, was helping out. And so these factors were mitigating uh, consumer prices, plus a lot of the right. liquidity, the inflation that the Fed was creating, it went into the stock market, it went into the real estate market, it, you know, into the cryptocurrency market, uh, you know, it, into the bond market. So I think a lot of these bubbles, as they deflate, the money is ultimately going to go into consumer prices, commodities and, and things like that. And so we're going right. to we're about to see a tsunami of inflation. And, you know, whether the Fed is oblivious to it or just lying about it, you know, there's no way to know. In my mind, I think it's already started. I mean, you can look at some of these price increases and they're very spectacular. And, uh, you know, they're just starting to work their way through the system. And again, I don't think we're transitioning uh, or it's transitory unless you're saying we're transitioning from low inflation to high inflation, which is uh, really what's happening. But what you want to look at to understand inflation is you look at the money supply because it's the money supply that is, was being inflated. I mean, literally, that's where the word comes from. Inflation is to expand. You inflate, right? When something is inflated, it expands. Prices don't expand. They go up, they go down, but they don't expand. It's money supply that expands. And we have the most expansionary monetary policy in US history. Uh, and no other era is even close to what we're doing right now. So this is massive inflation. And so to expect that prices are not going to respond by rising uh, is, is ridiculous. But then you also have to look at the supply side of the equation, because as the Federal Reserve is dumping all this newly printed money onto the economy, there's actually less stuff for people to buy because more and more right. people who used to be engaged in productive activities, whether they were producing goods or providing services, a lot of these people are now sitting at home collecting uh, these government checks. So we're creating more money to buy goods, but we're producing fewer goods to buy. And so how can prices not go way up? I mean, anybody who doesn't think that prices are gonna go way up, I mean, just not only don't they understand basic economics, they just don't even have any common sense. A lot of this money that people have saved was sent to them by the government. It's not like they earned more money and just didn't spend sure some of their increased earnings, the government just handed out this money. And yes, a lot of people haven't been able to spend it yet because they haven't got out of the house. And so they have bought a lot of goods. That's why our trade deficits in merchandise are at all time record highs. So unemployed Americans have been able to shop on Amazon and buy you know products made in China, but there's still a lot of other money that they haven't spent yet. 
that was yeah. provided to them by the government. And also, we don't know to what extent are Americans not paying their rent, not paying their mortgages because of these moratoriums, and instead they're just holding on to the cash. So uh, who knows, right? Because if you're told by your landlord, we can't evict you if you don't pay your rent, well, why pay it? I mean, I, I can live here for free. And so people could be accumulating this cash because they're not paying some of their bills. But yes, eventually, all of this hoarded cash is going to be spent. <laughs> and if we're not producing more goods and services for the money to be spent on, then all it could do is bid up the prices on the goods and services that already exist. We're in a situation where we have so much debt. And in fact, um, um, Janet Yellen was asked a question today. I was watching her in a Q and A. Right. And the, 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 the person questioning her said, hey, you know, when you were Fed chair, you did warn that we had too much debt. And here you are now as Secretary of the Treasury, we have a lot more debt. I think it was 70% of GDP when she said it was a problem. And now it's over 100%. And that's just debt held by the public, not total debt. Right. The, the question was, are, you know, why aren't you worried anymore about the, the debt? And, you know, her answer to that question was that, well, interest rates are really low. And the reason it's not a problem is because the rates are so low. And so servicing the debt is not that big a burden, given how low rates are. But it's unfortunate that the senator who asked her that question didn't follow up with a better question. What happens when interest rates go up? I mean, isn't it reckless and irresponsible to say we can afford all this debt because temporarily we have these low rates of interest, knowing that the national debt is financed mostly with short term paper and the government has to constantly roll over these T-bills and you know they're going to get the prevailing rate. Well, if you have this huge amount of debt and the only reason there's not a crisis is because interest rates are low, what happens if they're not low? What happens if interest rates are high? And I think that's the box the Federal Reserve is in because the Federal Reserve knows the only thing between the US government and default or insolvency is artificially low interest rates. So if the Federal Reserve knows if it raises interest rates, it bankrupts the government, how is the Federal Reserve going to fight inflation? And obviously, the longer the Fed waits to acknowledge it's not trans transitory, the bigger the inflation problem becomes. And so if inflation is at five or six or seven percent officially, by the five time the Fed realizes that it wasn't transitory, how does it fight that inflation without bankrupting the U.S. government? The answer is it can't. So my, my thinking is if it can't fight inflation without bankrupting the U.S. government, it won't fight the inflation, which means it bankrupts the U.S. public because it destroys the value of the dollar.